Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at another example included with the ESP Helper Library. So what we're going to look at today is the basic setup for using over-the-air updates on the ESP8266. So up at the top, you have to include the ESP Helper Library, and then we have just a little bit of network set up here. So I have this struct called netinfo, which has a couple of different fields in it. We have a network nickname, and this really isn't used very much, but I do enjoy having the ability to have a whole bunch of networks and different variables and give have all of them have different strings, different nicknames. So you'll want to fill that out. And then you want to put in your MQTT IP address the SSID of your network, and the password on your network. So those are four things that you'll need to fill out just to get the network set up. Then we go ahead and we create an instance of ESP Helper and we pass it our home net that we just created. And in setup, I'm gonna turn on the serial line. You don't need to, but I wanna have it print out some, you know, starting up and initialization finished so that I can see that it's working. And then in here, this is all we need to do for OTA setup here. So we tell it that we want to enable OTA, and then we set our password and our host name. And you can either do set host name or set host name with version, as I have here. And basically, the difference is that when you go to upload code, you'll see this host name appear. And I like to be able to show the version of ESP Helper that is currently running. That way it just, it's easy to glance and look through all the devices that I have and see which ones need to be updated to the latest version. So then I'm also just gonna add a subscription. There's no need to do this. This is just for MQTT, but you can add subscriptions at this point. And then we begin and we set our callback. And that's basically it. The only other thing that you need to do is make sure that you run the ESP helper loop at least every 100 or 200 milliseconds. Just basically what the loop does is automatically keep all the connections alive, keeps the connection to the MQTT broker, and keeps OTA enabled. And it also makes it just so that everything runs as it should. It handles automatic reconnect and disconnect from networks and all that kind of stuff. So that's the only other line that you need. And then we also have this empty callback function. This is where you would put any MQTT callback code. So that's it, it's pretty simple. Let's now go take a look at how to upload code using OTA. So I've come over here to Arduino and you might notice that there are some slight differences in the code here. There's no difference in the main code, but what I've done is I've included one of my own little personal libraries that has a whole bunch of my networks set up. That way I don't have to show you guys all of my network passwords and all that fun stuff. So that's the only difference. Other than that, same code. And to upload this code, you do initially have to upload it using a little flashing device. So you will initially have to go to your port and select your serial device there. Now you'll notice right here, I selected the serial device, but below it, if you have anything that has OTA enabled, you'll see these network ports. And you can see these are all the ones that are in my house. And you can see that that with version here, it shows the version number for every one of the modules. So I have this one flashed already and I have it called new ESP8266. So if I go ahead and I click on that, it's now selected that as my port. And the only other thing you need to watch out for when using OTA is to make sure you have the correct flash size. So you want to have at least the one, meg one megabyte with 64K uh, of the file system. You don't technically need the file system, but there's no one megabyte option without it. And this is also going to be based on the ESP module that you're using. You do want to make sure that you have the correct flash settings set. So if you don't know how to do that, 
you can very easily go to the examples. And if you look under the ESP8266 examples, it has check flash config as an example program. So if you run that and you open the serial monitor, it'll basically tell you whether you've selected a good flash, uh, flash size. So that's the only other thing you need to do. Now that I have my ESP module selected, it's as easy as just hitting upload. And there we go. Now it's uploading the program. Now I've already previously put in password for my password, but if this is your first time using OTA, you, you will be prompted for a password. So just make sure you know what that is. So now with any luck, you'll notice I have my, I changed my host name from new ESP8266 to OTA test. So if we go back in here, we can see, you can see that OTA test is now available to us. So that way, so that's how we know that we actually did upload the correct code to the correct module there. So that's basically how simple OTA updates using ESP helper are just a couple lines of code and you no longer have to plug in your ESP module to your computer to upload code. So feel free to scatter your ESPs all around your house and not have to worry ever again. All right, well, that's all there is for today. If you like this video, definitely go and give it a thumbs up down below. And if you like these kinds of videos in general, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. It'll give you updates anytime I post a new video. All right, well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.